I'm chatting with Susie and Steve Severin. Uh, we found out last week about Robert Smith. We only found out two weeks ago about Robert Smith. <laughs> You've anticipated my question. I mean, this, is, this seems to be happening an awful lot, doesn't it? People leaving. I, I, one of the they questions... They don't exactly leave. They kind of um, collapse. collapse and peter out. Uh, to be honest, Robert is uh, not working with us and he's not working full stop. He's, um, he's gone over the edge. So does that mean in the future Robert will be working with you again, do you think? No. I don't know if Robert will be working at all again. What about John Carruthers? How's he fitted in? Fine. I mean, this is, what, in the middle of a tour? Mm. Um, again, history well, repeating itself almost. Yes, on the eve of a tour. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that must put an, a, a real pressure on you, surely. When you... It does, but I suppose in, in hindsight it's always been beneficial in that uh, no-one's had any time to get complacent about anything. And John... I think everyone should, um, whatever they're doing, whatever they're trying to achieve, feel a bit scared and maybe not too confident about what they're doing. Otherwise, it just comes across smug and um, self-important. And so, so uh, this situation um, re re removes that smugness. I mean, it, it... it's not so much smug smugness. I think, um, well, we especially thrive on uh, diverse situations, situations that aren't perfect. Yeah. Uh, I think um, there's been times when situations have gotten a bit too close to being uh, too good, I suppose, and um, hasn't been very good for us. But you... that, I think, um, that's something that maybe you can learn to uh, create yourself when things do get good. You can put a spanner in the works yourself. Mm. Do you think uh, John Carruthers is going to be a permanent man, or, or is it too soon? Oh, you're asking me about a guitarist. I mean, no guitarist has ever been permanent. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's 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 change and let's, let's get on to something happier. I mean, Creatures. What's happening with Creatures? Nothing. <laughs> is there going to be anything happening with Creatures? If there's time, um, the Creatures only... Um, oh, really we... happened by accident, nothing was... How did, how did it actually come about? Um, well, in the way that the Banshees write songs, sometimes it's with um, guitar and voice or bass and drums, and uh, sometimes it's with drums and voice, and usually it's, um, it's a starting point and things are added to it. Um, it. It was a rehearsal before we recorded Juju, and um, me and Budgie were just working together whilst John McGeoch and Steve were having a tea break or something. Oh. And um, it didn't... It was obvious that nothing else was needed for this thing we were doing. It was called But Not Them. And it was just taken on from there, really. Mm. And only when there was time permitting. Mm. What about you, Steve? Are you, are you doing any... What's the word? Uh... Loving. Well, whatever. I mean, because you, you, you produced altered images as well, didn't you, for a while? Yeah, but um, it's quite hard uh, sort of um, pulling this group back together where every time it falls apart, so we haven't really got much time to do anything else apart from that. I was talking to Rat Scabies last week and we, we got on to Captain Sensible yeah. and the day job. It's... And Captain Desperate. Captain Desperate. Mm. Go on. <laughs> Go on. I mean, no, he's got go the on. big mouth. Um, but we were we were talking about Captain Sensible anyway, and and the day job and the the night job syndrome, i.e., Captain Sensible, the pop star, and uh, as a member of, <laughs> member of Damned. Um, do you see? Not at all. I know what you're getting at, and you're miles away. Am I? Yes. Fine. For a start, the Damned are a pantomime act anyway. Okay. Um, do you? A lot of bands go off to exotic places and record albums. Feast was recorded in Hawaii. Yeah, and they wear their Hawaiian shorts and shirts in those wonderful places. They don't suffer in leather. Why did you record in Hawaii? Because it was perverse. <coughs> I think we returned whiter than when we left. <laughs> Where was Hyena recorded? Oh, mm, sunny everywhere. Camden. <laughs> Camden, Stockholm, Islington. 
Yeah, the glamorous places. Yeah. You go for that. How long did it take? It's, it's been a while, hasn't it? Um, we were in the studio for about two and a half, three months altogether, but it was spread over a long period because we were going away to places like Israel to play live and then we did the Albert Hall and the video for that and stuff like that. So it was, uh, and of course Robert was disappearing every now and then, which was only a minor problem, but it did. Until he had done all his guitar, it was a bit of a stumbling block. I've done my research. <laughs> and I, if my research is correct, my research tells me that it was six years ago tomorrow that you started recording Hong Kong Garden. Does that sound about right that's, to you? That's about right. Yeah. You've mm -hmm. got the new LP now. Mm -hmm. um, it's obviously fair to say that there's a musical progression. Or, I mean, to the point that the, the single starts with... Str are they actually strings on the, or is it synth? Yeah, they are real strings. Um, the real McCoy. How did that come about? I mean, taking Hong Kong Garden on the left hand and, and the new single, I mean, the pressure, progression in between. Whose decision was it to use strings? Was it yours or, or producer or well, of what? Of course ours. Um, we've used strings a few years before. Uh, we actually took them out live, um, a trio of string players. Um, and we, we've always been fascinated with uh, um, even th uh, songs off the screen being scored into uh, string music, classical music. You say, of course, ours, yes, and, and of course. Look, at, look at me as though you're going to belt me. Um, so what does that mean? I mean, what, what does a producer do with Susie and the Banshees? Well, I think what a, um, to qualify being called a producer, a, a good producer is only, should only be as good as the group is. And um, it should work both ways. Um, for example, there's lots of producers that may be... Um, a lot of young groups, and we probably did it in the past, we thought we'd like to work with Blah Blah because we loved that certain album from that certain artist. But it doesn't really work like that. It, it depends on the artist and the producer at the time. How? And decisions are, or should be mutual. There's never any, there shouldn't be any bullying. Mm, from either side? No. So how? Well, sometimes from our side. How prepared are you before you go into a studio in the sense of, I mean, you both write the material. Um, a lot of bands spend like five years in a studio almost writing as they go. Does that work with a band, Chief, Steve? Um, every album has been different in that sense because um, the first couple of albums was all written in rehearsals or demoed first before we went in to record it. Then Kaleidoscope was about half and half this one was been the new album's been written entirely in the studio oh. hence it, that's the reason it's taken a bit longer than usual you actually write a lot about real life situations um in a warped kind of way yes. yeah i mean uh, the, christine was a fascinating story well, i just watched sybil over last weekend and um she's a latter-day christine i suppose yeah 22 personalities, wasn't it, so, mm. with Christine? 